Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. Today is May the 3rd, and I'm going to do the Just for Today meditation uh, with you from Narcotics Anonymous. I'd like to greet you this morning. I hope that you're doing well. Uh, let's see, what other things do I want to mention? I am brought to you by Hope Through Navigation. This is the Hood Recovery Services. Hood is an acronym, H-O-O-D, that stands for Hope offered on demand. I'm hoping that you're doing well this morning. Let's get into the reading. All right, just for today. Hopefully you can see that. The title is Sharing Our Gratitude. My gratitude speaks when I care and when I share with others the NA way, gratitude prayer. The longer we stay clean, the more we experience feelings of gratitude for our recovery. These feelings of gratitude aren't limited to particular gifts like new friends or the ability to be employed. More frequently, they arise from the overall sense of joy we feel in our new lives. These feelings are enhanced by our certainty of the course our lives would have taken if it weren't for the miracle we've experienced in Narcotics Anonymous. These feelings are so all-encompassing, so wondrous, and sometimes so overwhelming that we often can't find words for them. We sometimes openly weep with happiness while sharing in a meeting, yet we grope for words to express what we are feeling. We want so badly to convey to newcomers the gratitude we feel, but it seems that our language, excuse me, it seems that our language lacks the superlatives to describe it. I'm literally choking on air. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> when we share with tears in our eyes, when we choke up and can't talk at all, these are the times when our gratitude speaks most clearly. We share our gratitude directly from our hearts with their hearts, others hear and understand. Our gratitude speaks eloquently, though our words may not. Just for today, my gratitude has a voice of its own when it speaks. The heart understands. Today, I will share my gratitude with others, whether I can find the words or not. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the serenity prayer. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. Wow, so I love talking about gratitude. I love seeing it or showing it more than I love to talk about it. It's a very good topic. It's very introspective. Uh, it's uh, individualized or unique to each individual. My, my ideal of attitude might be different from another individual's. My level of gratitude might be different from another individual's. Uh, however, our gratitude speaks when I care, when I share with others the NA way. So even though I may not be able to put words to the level of gratitude or describe it or even convince someone that I have gratitude. It's not for them to judge, but what is possible is that when I share and when I care with others, it's, it becomes evident, it speaks for itself, right? So if I'm in a meeting and it is a first step meeting, meaning that it's a, a meeting for a newcomer and it's a first step meeting. So people are going to go around the room sharing quite randomly as they feel motivated to speak about their own experience, strength and hope about coming into the fellowship or, or stopping the, the actively using process for them. And then at the end of that first step meeting, generally there's a five minute time slot for the newcomer to actually share, right? So say, you know, I come into the meeting, I have um, 
just, I'm just pretending, right? But I, I have over 25 years and someone else comes in and they have 10 years and someone else comes in that has 60 days. Now, what I share about in reflecting on the, the time that when I came in at 25 years, 25 years ago, it may lose something in the translation, not because it didn't occur and not because I don't have gratitude for it or even remember it, but because so much time has passed since that initial stage. So when I tell it, there might be some things that I, I missed to tell. Uh, someone might nudge me and tell them about that time, right? I, I might miss some of those things because time has elapsed. Now, the other person that comes in with the in-between, I can't remember if I said 10 years or what, but they come in, they might have a little bit more clarity about that time period than someone with, you know, uh, 150% more clean time than they actually have. Now, the person with 60 days, that's what I'm focusing on. When they come in, whew, two months ago, Two months ago, they were chasing the next one. They might even still be dealing with some of the consequences, some legal issues as a direct result of just coming into the process of recovering. Now, when they share, listen to me. Now, when they share, their gratitude speaks and it has this, this freshness about it that the newcomer can immediately, I don't say for sure, but that they can relate to, right? Now, is that person's gratitude different than the person's with 10 years or different from the person with 25 years? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But what we need to focus on is that when we share and when we care, here it says, when I care and when I share with others, the NA way, my gratitude speaks right? It speaks in and of itself. We have a way of saying that what comes from the heart will touch the heart. Generally speaking, I believe, I believe that to be so, but I also believe that what, wh whoever is meant to hear my message is going to receive it. If I'm in a meeting and I am, I'm going to stop the share, but if I'm in a meeting and I am sharing about a divorce that I went through. Um, I've had a couple, so I can, I can share about relationships working and relationships not working, right? Um, and I'm sharing about that. If there's someone in the meeting that is contemplating divorce or they've been through one or they might be going through one, um, their ears will tune in, I believe, dial in to what I'm trying to say more readily because we have a commonality. We have a similarity now, right? As opposed to if I start sharing about uh, shoplifting, a person that hasn't ever shoplift or they don't have that disorder, right? Kleptomania, they don't, they don't have that that might just go over their head, right? That might not be something that their ears pick up on because that has not anything to do with them. That, that's not their story. But they will still listen, hopefully, attentively, because who knows, maybe down the road, they're going to encounter someone that is going to have that experience and they'll be like, man, I remember this lady sharing in the meeting one time and she, she was talking about how she just had to stop going to stores. She had to send people to go get what she wanted because she could not go into a store without picking up something that didn't belong to her. And she, she compared it to like uh, using. She just got the thrill, like a rush, right? And so I might be able to share, not that you were in the meeting, but exp your experience that you shared, right? With someone else, if I'm listening attentively. So I think that gratitude speaks because gratitude is loud. 
<laughs> Does that matter? I think I said something there. Gratitude speaks because gratitude is loud. Gratitude makes, having gratitude makes its presence known, right? Not necessarily with words, but you can observe an individual that has gratitude for what they have, from where they've come from to where they are today. They cherish. I heard someone today share about their recovering being like a baby and that they don't let anyone, they don't let anyone come near their baby or hold it or be responsible for it because this recovery thing is theirs, to, their responsibility. No one else gets to manage that for you. You have to take care of it. And the way they were describing it, I could see a lot of the women nodding and agreeing to hear this man speak about recovery as, as though he was pregnant and birthing a child into the world. And it becomes his center focus. No one else is responsible for that but him. That touched a lot of people that have children they could relate to that and I've felt the sense of uh, gratitude just the way he was expressing it which reminds me here recently there was a one-year-old that wandered away from the house and uh, on Sunday this past Sunday and they were looking for the baby he's just one he's a toddler and they were looking for him everywhere and they looked from him for him from morning until about 10 o'clock at night. But on Monday, when they were able to get daybreak, uh, they went back to looking again. And they believed that he walked into the creek. And sure enough, they found him. They found his body. And when I think about that, I think about from, from the share I heard today, and I think about what the parents must be going through, what they must be wondering, like, I don't know if they were taking a nap or he just they just lost track of him, but he's wandering around and surely someone probably had to see him by himself. Um, and I can't imagine seeing a little baby walking down the street and me not pulling over because this happened before. A little Tyler was trying to cross the street. He was in his diaper and he was trying to get to his sister who was across the street catching the bus. And I pulled over so fast and jumped out on Westnich over by Kalamazoo Deacon Conference. And I jumped out and I scooped him up. And I looked at her and I said, which house, which house? And she told me which house. And I went to the door and knocking on the door, knocking on the door, no one answered. I had to take this baby that was unfamiliar with me, but very comfortable in my arms into my job, uh, which would, would have been like uh, first community credit union attached to Calvin Sudeikin Conference. And I sat with this baby on my lap seemed like forever and I said I gotta call the police if if I can't get an answer at the door I'm going to need to call the police and I just can't imagine anyone seeing a toddler wandering around and not stop and try to help and so I, I just think about how our recovery is similar to that when my gratitude is speaking hopefully even newcomers, which I'm comparing to being the toddler wandering around, hopefully if one of us that has been around a lot longer, we know the ropes and we know how it is to be a female coming into the rooms or a man coming into the rooms, hopefully one of us that have a little bit more experience, strength and hope in this field of recovery would scoop that newcomer up and say, hey, you're getting too close to the edge there. What you doing? Come this way. Come over this way. Talk to me. Let me, let me, let's have a dialogue. Let's get to know each other, right? 
And a lot of times the newcomer won't have any idea why these people are approaching them. However, it's because we've been in the same spot, right? And so we're speaking to, in a sense to prevent you. We're, we're trying to interrupt or abort that movement that you're making, right? We're trying to interrupt it so that there's some downtime where you can actually settle down, settle your emotions, think about what you're doing, think about what you're saying, right? And figuratively pull you away from the edge, pull you away from the edge of the creek because we know you don't know how to swim, right? And if you go in too far, you will get swept away. You will get swept away. And you might think it's fun for a moment, but when your head goes under and you have no more air left, you will cease to exist in the world of recovery because you'll have relapsed, right? And gone back out. And so I just want to encourage you today to remember, remember that there's a message in everything that is around us. And we have a higher power that we can ask God Help me be aware of the messages you have for me today. Help me to, to live a life where my gratitude will speak loudly without me ever, ever having to say a word. But if I need to share my experience, strength, and hope for the benefit of someone else, help me to be humble enough to be able to do it in a way that is palatable, but also help me to have the courage to say what needs to be said. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed being with you today and I look forward to our time tomorrow.